please to know. And then we'll go and look at the car. First thing I'd like to talk to you about is vertical horizontal architecture. Really important because this underpins everything we do as a design and an engineering team at Aston Martin. The first thing to say is that vertical horizontal architecture is a methodology. It is not a platform. It is not something that we engineered in 2004 and we need to throw it away and start again. Hopefully as I go through the presentation you'll understand why I say it is a methodology. The V and the H is really straightforward. The V is for vertical and this stands for the shared body construction that we have across all our vehicles. Bonded aluminium, composites, super plastic formed aluminium, carbon fibre, we can make short cars, two doors, two seaters, two plus twos, even a four door car like the Rapide over on the side. To that recipe of the shared body structure principles, we add our horizontals, our H's. These are shared components or systems that we can carry across our cars. They're not always the same. Sometimes they are, like the air conditioning unit. Sometimes they are modified and developed and tuned to give us different flavors of cars. We can take the ingredients and cook them into something like a V12 Vantage or into something like a Rapid. Two very different cars, one a very sporting, two-door, two-seat sports car, one a more luxurious, four-door sporting car. At Aston Martin, again, there's quite a small engineering team. It's only about 300 people. These are some of our core competencies. I hope you would recognise some of those from having driven previous cars. Things like ride and handling, things like craftsmanship, leather, fits and finishes. But the good news is we are not alone as an engineering team. We have access to a global base of world-class engineering partners. I hope you would recognise quite a few of the logos of engineering teams across not just the UK, not just Europe, but throughout the entire planet Earth. We pick the best engineering partners to suit our needs. It could be Pirelli or Bridgestone to develop tyres, and every tyre is unique to our cars. It could be Leone, you may not recognise that name, they do our electrical wiring systems, all our harnessing. Ricaro on seats, Bang & Olufsen on audio systems. So, the core competencies are gave access to world-renowned engineering partners. The design process is really straightforward. Marek does a sketch, I colour it in. That's it. No, it's not quite that simple. <laughs> we take the design, which is based on hard points, which is based on parameters of seating positions, occupant eye ellipse, track, wheelbase, and we create the geometry in the car. We do most of this, practically all of it, in the virtual world using computer-aided design. But as important, and perhaps more important, we use CAE, Computer-Aided Engineering, analysis tools that allow us to prove the car out in the virtual world way before we've ever built a single car. So we can look at the rigidity of the body shell, particularly important in the new Vanquish, we can even listen to the noise that the exhaust makes. This is the sound frequency spectrum of the exhaust of a car. We can model airflow into the engine bay. We can measure airflow to cool and heat the occupants. We can measure airflow over the car. Many, many other aspects of the car we can prove virtually. But there does come a time, great news because we all like driving cars, but we will build a prototype and we will go and test it. We can test it in the UK, we can test it here in the arid desert heat of Kuwait. This is a picture from Rapid Development. And so we develop and refine our cars. So those are the basic principles. Shared vertical horizontal architecture, virtual prove out, final testing of the real thing. What has that allowed us to do over the last eight years? The answer is lots. We started with the DB9 in 2004. That is still the backbone the core of everything we do. More of that in a little bit while. We can develop that into a Volante. Because the VH architecture is so flexible, we don't need to worry about engineering the body structure of a Volante because it's already stiff when we engineer the coupe. Building on DB9, in 2005, 
we went to the V8 Vantage Coupe, shorter chassis, V8 4.3 litre engine at that point, very nimble, responsive, agile car, the DB9 more of a GT, and we could do a roadster version of that. That we see as being the foundations for VH, generation one of the VH architecture. All the principles, the braking systems, the engine management were established off those two cars. So, having done that, where do we go next? Up in price, up in technology. The DBS from 2008, we added to both the V and the H new technology. The V had new carbon fiber skin panels on the front fenders and the bonnet. On the horizontals, we added carbon ceramic brakes. We added adaptive damping systems. Now you've seen both those horizontals in other cars. The Volante of the DBS, you've seen carbon ceramic brakes in the V12 Vantage Coupe. We could take the engine developed for the DBS, we could take the braking system developed for the DBS, bring that into the Vantage car line and create what is for me my favourite Aston Martin, which is the V12 Vantage Coupe. Generation 2. Where do we go next? Generation 3. Founded around Rapid, again new technologies, new sealing systems, new areas of refinement in the car, noise, vibration and harshness, beam blade wipers, more H's, but of course the Rapid are very radically different, very versatile, very flexible, very luxurious car. Still a sports car, but a sports car that four people can travel in comfort. Also part of Gen 3 was the VA Vantage S. New gearbox, seven speed, automated manual, lighter, more compact, 25 kilos lighter than the outgoing gearbox. And the Virage, by Xenon headlamps, technology from the Rapid, introduced last year, generation three. But we're here today to talk about generation four. Now a little sneak preview, you're aware that we've announced this car, DB9, the new DB9 launched this year, Going, going back to the core, the backbone, the heart of Aston Martin. Not going to go into lots of detail about that today, save that for uh, the next few weeks, but that re-establishes the DB9's credentials, and then the car we are here to talk about, the new Vanquish, Generation 4. Now this, you won't be able to read this, but I wanted to illustrate the V and the H of the systems, how through the four generations, things have evolved and adapted. And the best things in the world come out of evolution, not revolution. That's how we're all here. So, without any further ado, if you'd like to join me on the other side of this technical property, we can talk a little bit about more what makes Generation 4 and the V and the H of the Vanquish. So, at the heart of any great sports car, of course, is its engine. And I'm delighted to say this is the new Aston Martin V12.